Hi guys, um, today's sermon is going to be called, anyway, just let me back up into place before I start. guys today's sermon is going to be called the perfection of imperfection uh, let's pray father I thank you for this time together and I thank you for what you're about to do what you're going to do and what you've already done father touch every heart touch every spirit hide me behind the cross let not Rachel speak but let Christ speak in me God, I praise you and I worship you for what you're going to do in this place today, God. Fill each heart, fill each spirit with hope and with your presence. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi guys, I hope you are doing well today and I hope you went to church today or watched a service online. Um, I hope that you are filled with God's grace and filled with the assurance that he loves you and went to the cross for you and would do, would do anything that's in his will for you, his beloved child. Um, and I hope you walk in that today. Well, today's sermon actually comes from my own life uh, entitled The Perfection of Imperfection. Anyone who knows me well knows that I'm extremely hard on myself. Like, when I say extremely hard, I'm extremely hard on myself. Um, I'm extremely hard on how I act towards people and how I, how I act um, towards myself and the little mistakes I make. I can make one little mistake and I'm thinking about that the whole day and, and two such things happened to me um, where I was just, they were just little things and I'm like, why did I do that? Why did I do that? What caused that? I shouldn't have done that. I should have known better. And in both situations, yes, I should have known better. And yes, I should have done differently. But I beat myself up um, to the point where it's like beating myself up to a pulp. To a pulp. And what's funny is, I can give grace to other people, but when it comes to myself, it's a different story. It's like almost I don't feel like sometimes I deserve the grace that I will extend to another person who did the exact same thing. And I was stewing over this over these two things and stewing over it and stewing over it and um and then the Lord said to me there's perfection in imperfection um and I was talking to a friend today at church and she brought up um the scripture where he says be perfect as I am perfect um, and I thought about that and I said to her that the Lord doesn't mean perfect as in no mistakes ever it says be perfect as it relates to I will make you perfect when when you submit yourself to the Lord 
he goes through a process. There are two processes um, to salvation. There is salvation and there's sanctification. Salvation happens right away. It's instantaneous. Sanctification, it's a long process and no one, absolutely no one is is um, ever fully sanctified. We're working on ourselves. So, um, when he says, be perfect as I am perfect, he means be perfect and I will make you perfect or through me, your perfection will come through. Um, and there's a scripture in Proverbs, I'm not sure where it's found, it says, a double-minded man is like a city without walls. He's unstable in all his ways. And I think a level of what God is talking about, about perfection, is like integrity and singleness of mind. Not to say that you won't make mistakes, but when you do, own up to them, take responsibility, and keep moving um because it's it's when you're here there and everywhere that's when there's a problem when you're one person in, in front of in front of one person and another person in front of um another human um that's where it becomes a problem because when you're scattered is where it becomes a problem. So back to the scripture of be perfect as I am perfect. I think in, in a way he's talking about the way it was revealed to me, be whole, whole in, in your ways, in your thoughts, in your deeds. He's like, be whole. I think perfect there means don't be scattered. Don't be here, there, and everywhere. Have integrity. Have, sing have singleness of mind. Have singleness of purpose. Because I think a lot of people can check all, all the boxes, but they have no integrity. Um, they can they can go to church every Sunday. They can they can do all things right. Check all those ticky boxes, as Jamie Carrington would say. Um, that's another at my church. Uh, they can check all those uh, ticky boxes, but still have no integrity. Like they say one thing and do another. Um, they say they're going to be there at a certain time and they're two hours late every day. Like they, sh they shove off the workload on their co-workers. They are not nice to people. They are not um, together in their thoughts. They're, he they're here and there and everywhere and they have no idea uh, what integrity is, what it means to be wholeness of mind, but they don't smoke, they don't drink, they don't swear, they don't fornicate, they, they don't do all that. And what the Lord is saying now is be whole, have integrity as I have integrity or as I strive as, as I am. So it's not like be perfect as I am perfect. It's like be as I am, basically. So, so God is faithful. God ha has integrity. God is, is separated. Oh, we 
we say he's holy, which basically means a separate a separation, like be ye holy as I am holy. So basically he's saying in those scriptures, he's saying, be what I am. If you know I have integrity, be a person of integrity. If you know I have grace, be a person of grace. If you know that I am faithful, be a faithful person. So I, I believe those are all traits that the Lord wants us to have and that we should strive for. But I think, um, I think the thing with us is that sometimes we are we can go to the extreme of perfectionism like i tend to do and beat myself up for every little mistake and like why did i do that why did i say that i shouldn't have done that and be thinking about it all day why did like uh, even after i apologize or whatever work out the situation i'm still thinking like, I should have known better. I should have known better. And the Lord is saying even to me, myself, give myself a break and and accept the fact that I'm human and I will make mistakes and I won't get everything right all the time. And it's a process for me to realize that to not be perfect is okay but the perfect he wants you to be is whole in your whole in your mind whole in your thoughts whole in your deeds because a lot of people um tick the check boxes but they have no integrity they say one thing and do another as i said before so he's wanting people who are who are men and women enough to to say, hey, I've made mistakes, and he and he's also wanted people who will, who will take responsibility for their actions. If you've done something wrong, if you've done something wrong. To hurt someone or if you missed something at work or whatever just say I did it I did it or what we used to say is my bad my mistake I'll fix it and to accept res responsibility for what you have had in that moment um, Past, my pastor said something very interesting last week. He said when he was talking about manic moments, which moments that we all are kind of up and down in our thoughts and we make crazy decisions. He said manic moments don't destroy your calling, they destroy your credibility. So God called you that's one and done and that won't be taken away but your moments of craziness or your manic moments will destroy your credibility it will enable people not to trust you enable people not to take you seriously so if you're not whole or if you're not in this case um, what I believe God is um, describing as perfect, which means, um, which doesn't mean you get everything right. It means you, even when you don't get things right, even when you do make mistakes, you accept responsibility and take the fall. And when you don't do that, it creates a lack of trust and a lack of um understanding from people because if people can't trust you how 
call you going to do what God's called you to do. Um, I'm not saying that everybody's going to like you or everybody has to like you. Everybody will not like you. Everybody will not celebrate you. But when you're when you're professing Christ, all people want to know is you're a genuine person. Um, a funny situation happened to me today. Um, I was getting um, something from the donut machine and someone was helping me and I was at church. Because um, at my church we have tithing for academic machines. So that person, uh, while they were looking for the, the correct uh, bank card, they pulled out my scene movie card and they said, <laughs> they said, Rachel, do you go to the movies? And I didn't say anything for a minute because um, I was afraid of telling the person, yes, I love the movies. I, I love to go to the movies. Um, I was afraid because this person was a little older than me that she would be old school and judge me. And another person, uh, beside us, we were all in a group, um, said, never be afraid to show who you are at all, at all times. What you do is between you and God. And never be afraid to be genuine and true to yourself and who you are at all times. And if certain people can't go to the movies for whatever reason, that's their issue. And if they consider it a sin, it's their issue. Um, unless God says clearly in his word not to do it, um, it's all between you and God and to be genuine and together at all times and I said to that person no taken I think sometimes we're so afraid of how people perceive us and how we are uh, we are uh, t taken by people that we're afraid to be who we are we're afraid to be who God called us to be and we want we want to look p perfect in that person's eyes. We want to look like we have it together. We want to look like we cross our T's and dot our I's. But the Lord is just calling for people to look, ge to be genuine, to be who they are. And if you're working on a certain area, just say, I'm working on a certain area. I'm not there yet. I have areas that I'm working on most definitely. I'm not there yet. And neither is he calling us to be there. He's calling us to um, be holy as in um, to be separate. He's calling us to be perfect as in whole, as in together as in people of integrity. That's what he's calling us to be. And I think um, that's what a lot of people don't understand. People just want to interact and meet with and talk with genuine people. People who are who they are. And they don't act one way in church and act one way out of church or act one way at work or act one way with their kids. People want people who are the same person wherever they go. And if they're working on issues, that's fine. But he just wants people who are genuine, who will love him genuinely, who will say, God, I really don't know what I'm doing. I 
I need your help, I need your love, I need your understanding. And I think that's what blocks a lot of people because they want to appear to be perfect in front of people because, um, because they don't know who they are or, and they get their validation from people or sometimes they want to appear to be perfect in front of people because they don't want people to get a misunderstanding of who God is. That, that's sometimes what I go through. What I go through is not because of people. It's just, it's just because I know how sometimes uh, people perceive Christians and I try and be, be quote unquote perfect because um, I don't want people to perceive me or, or at most my God like that. And the Lord is saying to me specifically, and to sum up you out there, give yourself a break. You're not, you're not God. You represent me. And to me, he's saying, you do it very well. And if you screw up sometimes, so what? You're human. And it's okay to be uh, who you are. It's okay to not have it all together. And as long as you admit when you're wrong, it's okay. And I think that um, the Lord uh, really wants that from people because the people who are coming into the church they won't have it all together they will be people that um, be, be people that are a little rough around the edges perhaps people that you know uh, don't have it all together and those people that are coming into the kingdom need to see people that are that are just like them so they know that they can do it as well if they see people that are all that act to be all perfect and all la di da every every day we ask them how they are oh i'm blessed and highly favored of the lord um they'll say oh my gosh this person's too perfect i can't relate to them i can't deal with them so the lord is saying be whole and be genuinely who you are and if you're working on issues, work on those issues. Say, you know what? I haven't got it all together in this area. I still have a problem with lying. I still have a problem with being on time. I still have a problem with gossiping. And submit that to the Lord and let Him, through, through a process that He will take you through, deliver you. And there's deliverance for everyone from anything. The Lord wants you to know that you have not gone too far, that you have not sinned too wide, that you that He still loves you, and He is just waiting for you to come to the cross and bow down before Him and say, God, I haven't got it all together. I don't know what I'm doing. Please help me. And after you say that, he's free to do his work in you. And if you surrender to the power of his work, your life will never be the same. He wants you to know that he, he loves you and he's waiting for you. Not to be perfect, but just to say, God, I'm imperfect. Um, I uh, to end off this sermon before I pray uh, everybody knows I love to sing songs usually before I preach I used to play them 
before the YouTube rules changed. Uh, and now I sing them before I preach. But I was uh, saying, singing this song, and it's just a chorus. I was singing, His strength is perfect. One and our strength is beyond. He'll carry us when we can't carry on. Raised in his power, the weak become strong. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. When our strength is gone, He'll carry us when we can't carry on. On raised in His power, the weak become. Strong. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. So, wh when you're weak, when you're imperfect, he, he is strong in your imperfectness. He will not only help you, restore you, deliver you, to who you're supposed to be, but he will be the perfection that you can't be. So he will be perfect inside of you. So all that thing I was saying before about integrity and being whole and being of sound mind and doing all those things, it's only possible, really possible, if you have a relationship with Christ. If you don't have a relationship with Christ today, just ask him to come in. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to, to do whatever you want him to do in your life and just come take over. And he wants to hear your words, not mine. He's there for you and calling you today. Thanks. Thanks so much. Father, I pray for your wisdom and God, I pray that you drench everyone in your spirit today, God. I pray that you reveal, reveal to everyone how God you are in their lives, oh God. And I pray that the spirit of imperfection be eradicated and the true spirit of truth perfect of true perfection which means wholeness of mind wholeness of heart wholeness of body and wholeness of spirit pervade us today and i pray that you'll teach us your version of per per perfection and I pray that in the places that we are imperfect, that you'll heal us and deliver. And Lord God, I pray that you'll speak to us through this message in a divine way. Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. I ask that you cover us, restore us, heal us, break and be chained through this sermon, oh God. Cause people to come to you. Um, through this sermon, oh God, you spoke in a mighty way, Lord God, and I thank you and I praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, thanks guys. See you next week. Bye.